What happens when a shady wrestling promotion dies and then 10 years later is brought back just to scam everyone all over again? One Pro Wrestling ran their first ever show live from the Doncaster Dome on the 1st of October 2005 and it was the first chapter of a very turbulent tale. One PW, a cruel twist of fate, their first ever show featured names such as Chris Sabin, Jerry Lynn, The Blue Meanie, Al Snow, D'Lo Brown, Corey Graves, Austin Aries, Raven, The Sandman, Tommy Dreamer, Abyss, AJ Styles, and more. 1PW were bringing American talent to British soil, and as a result, their shows were stacked. They ran their next set of shows in January of 2006, a two-tag show that featured matches like Abyss vs. Sabu, Samoa Joe vs. Masato Tanaka, AJ Styles vs. Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lynn vs. Petey Williams, and the Unbreakable Triple Threat but with Charlie Haas also in there. 1PW were not slowing down with the amount of fly-ins and the amount of good talent they were booking. They were essentially just TNA, but on British soil. They had all the foreign talents that they'd fly over, and they mixed them in with a roster of numerous local and British talents. And 1PW would continue in stride in 2006. They ran about a dozen shows in 2006 and kept up with the big names coming in. Names that wrestled and appeared for 1PW in 2006 that I haven't even mentioned yet include Brian Danielson, Jimmy Snooker, Nigel McGuinness, and Bret Hart. Yes, that's right. One of the biggest names ever in wrestling who was long retired was flown in by 1PW to give a five minute speech. And of course, Teddy Hart made an appearance for them too, because of course he did. It's the mid 2000s. It's an indie show in the mid 2000s. Of course, Teddy Hart is on it. They also crowned their inaugural champions that year, with Jody Fleisch and Johnny Storm winning the tag titles, Pac winning the open weight title, and Abyss winning the world title. Title. However, booking all these names and spending all this money to fly out talent and pay for their appearance was always going to catch up to them, and unsurprisingly, with the amount that 1PW were flying people in, it came back to bite their ass very quickly, and on January 5th, 2007, at approximately 1.26pm, 1PW posted a statement on their website announcing they had gone into liquidation. The statement reads as following, It is with the deepest regret and sadness that 1PW Promotions Limited announces today that the company has ceased trading, effective today, and has entered into liquidation. The cease of trading is effective immediately, and thus all future dates, including the January 13th No Turning Back show, are sadly cancelled. On behalf of 1PW Promotions Limited, I want to extend our heartfelt apology to anyone inconvenienced or disappointed by the cancellation of upcoming shows. They advertise where you can get refunds from, and 1PW Chairman Stephen Gauntley also left a personal statement in the note, saying that he was prepared for the backlash and to not listen to what the dirt sheets are going to be saying about this. Interesting. Stephen Gortley, by the way, is a man who you will hear a lot more about in the next part of this video. 1PW would actually run a show shortly after this, a farewell show titled 1PW Will Not Die, a show that featured a much less stacked card and was very, very showing of the money they had lost. 1PW went out on a whimper. Or did they? Because just three months later, 1PW was back with another show titled 1PW Resurrection and welcome to the trend of 1PW announcing that they were dead and then just coming back. This is the first of many. 1PW returned to running shows and flying in talents from the States, which where the money came from to do that, who even knows, but you had the likes of El Generico coming onto the show to defend the PWG world title. How 1PW were getting stuff like this booked is still beyond me. In 2008 though, we would see what would be the first in many changes in ownership when Stephen Gauntley bailed out of the company in 2008, and it was taken over by 1PW wrestler Dragon Asu, as well as other the wrestlers on the roster. And also that year in 2008, a man named Danny Rod would become owner, and then in 2009, he would become the sole owner of the company. And this would usher in an entirely new era for 1PW. <laughs>
With the ownership of 1PW now in the hands of Danny Rod, 1PW went back to doing 1PW things, booking talents from the states and flying people in with money which nobody knows where they got it from. And it was only about a year and a half before 1PW would get another death announcement. In August of 2010, another statement was posted by 1PW. They announced they had to cancel all their upcoming shows due to outstanding debts from a show they ran in Liverpool, with talent not getting paid. However, at the very end of the statement, Danny says it's not the end of 1PW, it's just see you down the road. Following this, fans of 1PW would start a campaign to get new investors behind the company, and well, it seemingly worked, because three months later, the 1PW website was updated to say, personally from Danny Rod, 1PW is back and soon to be better than ever. Keep checking for updates. 1PW had been bailed out again. And 1PW seemingly had big plans under these new investors, as in February of 2011, it was announced that Shawn Michaels would be coming to 1PW to appear for them in October of 2011 and do a UK tour. This was huge. Shawn Michaels had retired less than just a year prior and was still a huge name, and a name that a lot of people wanted to see. It was announced that the tour Shawn Michaels would be doing in the UK would consist of him appearing at 1PW shows in Doncaster, as well as doing a meet and greet in Oxford. 1PW also announced a tour of the Middle East and a trip to Dubai of all places. So seemingly, a lot of money was being pumped into 1PW, but once again, this is 1PW, and unfortunately, nothing ever lasts in 1PW. On July 2nd of 2011, a post was made to the UK fan forums that reads as followed. Just seen on Facebook, Mark Sloan's meet and greet in Oxford in October with HPK has been cancelled. I wonder what implications this could have for 1PW. Your first question based on this post is probably, who is Mark Sloan? Mark Sloan is a wrestling promoter based in the UK, and this post also mentions the meet and greet in Oxford, which is something I mentioned before was taking place with Shawn Michaels. Essentially, Mark Sloan was the promoter behind the meet and greet in Oxford, which was a completely separate thing to his 1PW appearances. Mark Sloan, though, would actually respond to this post saying that he had received information that caused them to pull the appearance of Shawn Michaels and that every single ticket had been refunded for the meet and greet. Interestingly though, he also went on to say, we felt it was best for the people who purchased tickets to have their money returned and for us to stop advertising the fact he would be in the UK on that date. Almost implying that, well, Shawn Michaels wasn't gonna be in the UK on that date. Despite this though, 1PW continued to advertise that Shawn Michaels would be appearing for them. Six days later, WrestleZone posted an article that showed an email statement from Shawn Michaels agents, and while the original article with the email it does not exist anymore due to Shawn Michaels agents asking to take it down, I'm guessing that this statement was something to do with the fact that this appearance wasn't happening. However, following the posting of that article, WrestleZone were contacted to say that 1PW and Shawn Michaels were still negotiating. However, after this, 1PW simply just went silent, and they closed their doors once again, leaving the fans fuming as they didn't have a Shawn Michaels meet and greet, nor did they have refunds. However, after weeks of silence, Danny Rod finally came out in August of 2011 to release a statement. In his statement, Danny claims to be a victim of a scam and that the fall has been placed on him for HBK ultimately not making it to the UK, saying that he has taken the heat away from the main culprit. But regardless of who was to blame, fans Fans were left in the dark, Shawn Michaels never came, fans never got a refund, and 1PW was finished. Or was it? Because somehow, 11 years later, 1PW returned with its original ownership, and that is exactly what we're going to be discussing in part two, yes. Yes, this is a two-parter. Been very rare, been a very long time since I've done one of these. Like and subscribe to be the first to see part two.